How's it going? Um, just trying to give this a bit of a, a bit of a coating of oil without uh, taking any colour off. I put put a bit of clear on just the colours to try and set them a little bit. Just trying to get this to oil to sink in a bit. It's a um, a tongue. It's an oil that's basically just tongue oil, and, uh, mineral oil, but it's got a couple other things in there. I only sealed it with the clear lacquer so that I could put the kind of get a bit of an oil over it and without it uh, rubbing off on me. Looks like it's working all right. Right. Actually worked out quite nicely to be honest. It's a little bit hesitant. Hey gone. How are you doing today? Yeah, right. I thought I was going to be in here by myself today. <laughs> well, I just I got the notice while I was in the midst of finishing up a load of dishes. Unfortunately, that has to come first. Yep. So I put a um I, I sprayed clear one coat of clear lacquer over all of these colours just to try and set them in a little bit. Um, because they weren't they weren't actually I could still touch them and get a slight bit of color on my finger after two days. So wow. I put a I put a slight bit of um clear over the top, only just so that I can oil oil the piece without it like run colours running on me. 
Yep, you go to set them. Yeah, and I've just finished doing one coat of oil over them, so not bad. No, oh, that's turned out to be a real nice looking piece. I had to do something a little bit different with it. It's my, uh, it's my, it's my second to last piece of olive. So and the other piece so, I got, got a crutch piece. The other bit. So. What's the weather like there today? Um, there's no clouds to hold in a little bit of that uh, that heat, you know, that's left over from the day before. So it's rather <laughs> brisk here at the moment. Uh. With no clouds their ground doesn't hold a lot of heat then i take it no not at all is it uh from a lot of the stuff i see it looks as if it's all semi-arid or arid uh maybe that's just where they want to show the people in the world but that it's like it's if it had water it might be you know usable but. um no, it's, it's generally like a um a desert in the um uh winter time here you know when there's no clouds in the sky to keep that little bit of heat in it's very very cold <laughs> it can it can get nice yeah. during the day but it doesn't get nice till about one or two o'clock in the afternoon ah Is any of the soil really fertile? Yeah, they've got a lot of um, we've got a lot of uh, clay here, but I've reconditioned it a little bit to to make it be a, a better soil at least. And then the sawdust that I'm putting outside is actually uh, improving it a lot too. Oh yeah. So I've got my, my backyard is basically all really nice soil because because I've reconditioned it all and uh, and the front yard is all clay hard hard crap like you, you stick a shovel in it and it bounces back at you pretty much that kind of stuff do you use a ground cover like everywhere here everyone has green grass Oh. They try to have the grass green, but it doesn't take much water to keep it that way. Hey, go on, Mike. Nah, I'm not. Honestly, I'm not a fan of grass. Grass is just a waste of space, as far as I'm concerned. I'd rather have plants all over it, like you know, ground cover and um, uh, uh, uh what do they call it? Uh, lamb's ear and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I've, I've honestly never really been a fan of having a a lawn. Uh, it, it's a great space to grow vegetables. <laughs> if you've got a big spans of you know of green mm -hmm. lawn, you could grow some nice veggies on that. Uh, I've, I've honestly I've never had enough property to have any lawn, so. And my mum has, but she let it die off because for the same reason, pretty much, couldn't be bothered with it. <laughs> <laughs> Where you are, is water scarce or do you have ample water? Um, there's plenty of water. We're not in restrictions or anything like that. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, no. Um our um our water reservoir is in a place called um i'm pretty sure it's near chain of ponds if you want to look that up on the map chain of ponds chain of ponds in um south australia adelaide hills we've got a big reservoir out there and uh it was a town it got flooded <laughs> Oh. Deliberately, deliberately, though. When when the um, when the reservoir goes down a bit, the the, the uh, cross on the top of the um, church sticks out sometimes. Uh, I have seen that. 
Yeah. Was, um, I forget, it was one of the, the shows, shows out of Australia some time ago where they were talking about uh, ponds and stuff that simply the water seems to move elsewhere Yeah, type thing. Yeah. And I thought that was interesting to see a church tower, uh, the cross, the steeple. Yep. And there's a lot of um, dive companies here that take people on tours down there. Oh. <clears throat> I posted a link so someone could pop up. Yeah, no, Mike won't. But pulling a, a stump out of wet clay. Oh, a pain in, yeah, I would think so. I've pulled stumps before when I was young and stupid. I had a Ford Bronco. I had a front end with a big winch, and it was a prototype Bronco from Ford directly. Only because I worked there part-time in the motion picture department. And uh, it was interesting because I thought I knew how to do it. And I offered to help a friend pull a stump out, had a winch and everything on the front end, but thought like a smart aleck, I'll pull it out with the bumper. And instead it ripped the bumper off the back of the Bronco. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. But being a prototype car, it was made up of a lot of other vehicle parts because they were, the body was what they were going to come out with. Yeah. And, but to make it, they used uh, the frame from a pickup truck, but they had to shorten the drive axle. <laughs> but that wasn't a problem. They just, that was all done. But it was a heavy frame, but the bumper on it wasn't heavy enough to pull stuff with. Yeah, as you found out. Hey, go on, Robert. Yes. Good morning, Bob. Just yes. Jay and Mike, by the look of it. Yeah. And any other lurkers in the background? Yeah. So, Robo, how are you doing today? Oh, all right. Just been at solicitor's offices, signing over powers of attorney and doing wills and shit like that. Oh. Why? Hey? Why? What's going on? Oh, well, I don't intend on dying yet, but um, <laughs> I don't want I don't want the government to get any money we've got just because we haven't got, got a will made, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. you got to have wills today. Because <coughs> the only people that win when it comes to a non-will death are the attorneys. And the government. Yeah. Yeah, that came up not too bad, Joe. Yeah. Something different. Hey? Right. Right? Something different? Just just wait a minute, I'll be back in a second. That's what most people didn't get to see was the inside. Mm-hmm. I do like that. What are you going to do with the bottom? Uh, nothing. Leave it like that. I put a put a black line underneath yesterday with a with my yeah. pants, and then I got color everywhere, and and I spat the dummy and walked out. 
closed my shed up and went stuff here, you can stay there. <laughs> so if, if people can't see the colour, then I'm not going to show it. <laughs> no, the colour is really nice. No, where I stuffed it up. There. I don't even know how it got on there. I, I'm not bothered. I'm, I'm over it, to be honest. So that's just how it stays now. Well, the thing is, the first one you do is usually a pilot, figuring out how to do it and what to use. Like you come up with your, your dies, and you know, that was, these are all part of creating the first one. Then the second one is intentional. Yes. And I just got to reverse it and take the bottom off. Yep. Going to see if I could do it like that, but I don't think that's going to happen. I was kind of hoping I could put it on the outside and it would grab it and it would. Uh, and it would grab the chord there, but it didn't. It wasn't wide enough. Bloody thing. Should be game enough getting the tool in there. So what's the weather like today? We've got uh, we've got eleven in the shed. So most probably not much different outside. There's there's no oh. there's no trees and it's uh it's nice and sunny today, so Yeah, we were sunny all day today. It was sunny. Yeah. I was out in my shop this morning doing some cleaning. I just felt in the mood of cleaning, so I did. <laughs> yeah. Matt and I got watching a movie on my tablet while I was cleaning. Yeah. Well, if you feel in the mood, Bob, you can come over and clean out my place too. So bring a trailer and that. Nearby, I'd glad to. <laughs> Just to see a 40 foot lathe, I would. Clean it or clean it out? I heard clean it out. I'd probably <laughs> clean it just for the, the whole shop, just so I could use a 40. Say I've actually turned something on a 40 footer. As a kid, my my grandfather had one in the shop, but he wouldn't let anybody other than the two people he had that were employed by him uh, use it because it was it's, um, when when I was there, dangerous. When I was there, there was a giant um, workbench there, but it didn't see any lies. <laughs> Oh, it makes a good workbench. <laughs> I can clamp. I can clamp things to it. I can weld on it. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I tried. I ordered some of the dyes that Jay used, so I'm going to see what they're like when I get them. I don't often do things bright and vivid other than for kids, but they look so neat. I'm going to have to try some for kids. So, Robo, did you get all your legal stuff taken care of? Did you talk about the robot? No, I can't hear you, Robo. I can see you talking, but but you're not muted. So what you going to do now you got the stump out? Is anything worth drying and using? Yeah, sorry about that. Can you hear me now, Bob? Yep. Right, good. Now, sorry, Jay, what did you say before? I didn't hear what you said. Uh, Dr. Bob asked you something and you never replied, that's all. Oh, right. Yes, all the stuff's been done, Bob. Just got to get the kids to sign all the power of attorneys now to know that, so to let them know that they know. 
then they'll probably try and put me in an old people's home. Huh. I'll find a room for you here. <laughs> But when the ideal thing is, is for you to be able to tour the world now, so you're known on three continents and make your money being a guest speaker. Uh, I've got no interest in going overseas, that's the problem. Last time I went overseas, they shot at me. What, now? Yeah. No, I've been overseas since then, but... <coughs> yeah, it can be a pain getting some of those... Uh, tree stumps out my uncle had one on the property it's a bit of a long story how it ended up coming out but it, it took it took 12 12 sticks of dynamite to get it out Here we've got a stump behind our garage. I trimmed it to the to the ground. It was dead when we came. Moved in twelve years ago. And I for some reason it keeps wanting it's not growing. It's like it's being pushed up out of the ground from the movement of soil or something, but Last year, I went out there, and I dug around it again, and another foot or two down, and took a chainsaw to it, and cut it off, and filled it up with dirt. And now I'm getting sprouts coming out the top of it, where I had cut it off. <laughs> now, even if they had a product, they said, put this in, and it'll kill it. That didn't. Then the latest was these nails you drive in. And that's supposed to kill it. Hasn't yet. Uh, we had one like that, a gum tree. And it just kept growing and growing. Every time we poisoned it, more came up. Eventually we did get it. But geez, I'll tell you what, it took about three years, I reckon. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> out, out of, in Australia, we have stuff called, um, uh, oh, what do they call it? Black Earth. And I'll tell you what, you walk about four steps onto it. And that um, you you gain about eight inches in height because it sticks to your shoes. Well, it was something like that in Southeast Asia. I remember it always would, you'd walk in it and it would fill all the cleats up in your boots and then you didn't have any stability. And it was, 
you know, you'd have to stop and try to poke the stuff out of the cleats that you had, the rubber nibs in the the combat boots. Yeah. What do you do to your thumb, Joe? Oh, no, it looked like it had a band-aid or something on it when it was down behind the rest there. I haven't seen that measurement for a long time, 100 to 100 weight. Yep. Thirty two thirty two pound of Packages of cement went down, uh, but the the prices weren't commiserate with the uh, the same rate of the decrease in weight. I noticed. Yeah, we're all metric now, Mike. We don't have any pounds, ounces or stones or anything like that anymore. Unless we get stuff from America. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh Everything here under packaging has to show metric also. Yeah, I know. Because that is a little known, I won't say secret, but it was made a national standard back in the 50s. Because uh, I remember in elementary school having to learn metric. 
because they were changing the standard and our math books and even our books that we had for reading uh, that were printed on newspaper format where everybody got one, you know, and you could fill in and color the pictures in it too with crayons. But we had to learn metric because that was the new standard. Except they somehow overlooked the fact to change all the speed limit signs and all the mile markers across the nation was too much money. Good night, Chris. How are you? So that didn't go very long. Uh, they still kept both and required packaging to have both in it. How you going, Chris? Howdy, Chris. Oh, terrible lighting. What's going on there? So just a... Uh, a slightly yeah, undercut. Yeah. Slightly concaved. <laughs> oh, hard to see it without it uh, glaring out, washing out too much. But it was starting to vibrate under there really badly. I was going to. Uh, I don't know if you can see the vibration marks on the. Oh, yeah. All the cracks that's got in under there. But that actually adds to it because that's texturing. Free, eh? Like yeah. having one of those Sorby texturing tools with a wheel. <laughs> All right, look down there now. Is that like a uh, a mud guard roller, and a um, or just to roll it into a roll, like to get flat sheet rolled around into a into a, a circle, Mike? Whose turn is it now? Come on. What's the weather there like like tonight tonight, Dr. Bob? Uh Quickly, or I can just ask her, <sighs> Alexa. What's the weather for tonight? This evening, you can look for partly cloudy skies with temperatures around 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Not bad, partly cloudy and 52. Yeah, nice weather for you to be in your shop. <laughs> yeah. That's the only reason I asked the weather. <laughs> All right, I'll see you when you get out there. No, <laughs> no I don't care. I, just... I was out most of the day. Oh, then get back out there then. <laughs> well, it's been. 12, I was out there 20 hours ago. 
18 hours ago when I, so and I yep. just came in about an hour and a half ago of course I told the teens fix dinner so they ordered pizza <laughs> uh, yep takeaway is the best option isn't it well for a oh. team at least anyway well yesterday we had a barbecue with burgers and hot dogs and stuff which was great where's mine, where's mine? you didn't come <sighs> invitation must have got lost in the mail uh -huh. uh, either you got to fix that transport uh, get a hold of the doctor who who <laughs> doctor who who <laughs> knock knock who's there yeah. You've heard of the BBC show Doctor Who, I would hope. Yes. <laughs> you taught it. I've, it. It seems to be everywhere. It is one of the most watched shows in the world. I understand it's in 19 languages. Yeah. And I, I've watched a unique version of it a few years ago that was running in North Korea and they had the translation in English under you know printed and boy <laughs> did they ever twist the story badly I bet they did <laughs> um, I've often sat there and watched um, like the old Kung Fu movies where they, they, they don't talk but they move their lips and, and then yes. you you see the translation underneath and you're thinking, hmm, I wonder what they're actually saying. <laughs> yeah. Because the, the translator on the TV is mostly about as good as Google. Hopeless. But some of the things I watch on YouTube, um, I watch it once with no sound, but then if it's not making sense, the trans the, what they what Google thinks they're saying. I'll go back and watch it with speakers, and it's nothing to what they're even saying. <laughs> yeah, I, the yeah the, it's a decent translator, and you can actually I've noticed a lot of videos now, especially coming out of Europe and the Middle East and South, probably South Korea, Japan, to where yep. they have, you know, it's. The voice sounds real enough. It's a nice gentleman or lady reading, you know, telling and, and but they because but they do it instead of subtitles because I've actually turned the subtitles on too because most professionals do subtitles. Um, you know, it's like I listen in. I like trains and to watch trains that are in the Himalayas. And a train ride, you know, on top of a freight car and going through the Himalayas. That's beautiful scenery. But the, the language of the person talking is really good English. Except there are common words that are basically abbreviations. You know, like pounds, LBS. They'll be talking about it and they'll say, and they'll try to pronounce LBS as a word phonetically. Okay. You know it's a translator then. And especially some of the technical terms in railroading, they'll bring them up and they, the translator doesn't know what it is, and but they're doing it from... Uh, a, a script that they're reading, you know, that's along with it. And uh, <laughs> the narration track, and it, it's really hilarious the way some abbreviations are pronounced as words. Didn't realize I had it on mute. <laughs> Sorry. Um, 
that'll be really handy, actually, Mike, for some of the stuff I think you do. So you can't you can't weld the bronze gear together, can you? Can you weld bronze? I thought it had to be brazed. Well, brazed or welded, it's welding is just the joining of two metals. It doesn't matter whether it's brazing, bronzing. It's when you have to do it that you've got to get the terminology right. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I was. <coughs> it's that's unfortunately my grandparents' training. You call it what it is. He used to do a lot. They had to make their own tools. And I remember one of the big belt wheels had a crack in it, and they had to fix it, and they they, they brazed it. We'll be back in a sec. Yeah, or another alternative is having one um, yeah. made out of brass. Put a reminder on the computer. <sighs> right. There you go. I made a, I made a, a Chinaman's hat. Mm. Don't be so enthralled, Robbo. Mm. I'll put little eyes under here. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got to make the rest of it. Well, I could just say, ah, whatever. Yeah, bugger off, you idiot. <laughs> could say, could say something like that, you know. Get a bloody lathe like that and you're turning shit like that. Come on, mate. <laughs> that shows delicate work to do it. <laughs> the robot's thinking it and, 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 and I know it, you see. No. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah? Yeah, nah? Yeah, nah. Oh, yeah. Have that on the foot. I was just thinking I'm going to have to go soon. It's lunchtime, so. Yeah. <laughs> Dangerous, man. I'll tell you what, people, mate, a lathe maker should be shot for not putting a bloody a lock on these headstocks. <laughs> no, problem is, problem is, it all adds to the price. Yeah. At least you've got a spanner to hold it. That's more. That's yes. all right. You know, I used to supply a foundry to a place that was 30 kilometres from our place, but unfortunately they closed down about 15 years ago. Used to make all the uh, 
wooden molds for their sand casting. It was oh, an interesting yeah. job, actually. Yeah, it would have been different. That's for sure. Yeah, it was. And boy, you sure have to learn to read drawings for those things because I've got holes in places and... <laughs> Oh, yeah, I've got a, I don't know where he's at anymore, but when I lived in the D.C. area, I had a neighbor that did a lot of sand casting as a hobby. Yes, Chris, I have. What? And aluminium. Oh, Chris asked, have you ever turned brass on a wood light? And I've turned brass and aluminium on a wood light. Oh, oh that's wow. something about you, you've said you've got a um, a metal turning lathe, didn't you, Robbo? Yeah. Is it usable? Yeah. Can I use it when I get there? Why? What do you want to do? Uh, I want to make a face plate. Uh, yeah. I just want to make one of those ring ones. because They're too expensive to buy, and surely it's got to be cheaper to just buy a slab of alloy and no, it's not. No, it's no, not. No, it's no, not. They're, they're normally cast. But you could do it on a, a metal turning lathe, though, couldn't you? Well, you could, but the, so you've got to get a bit of steel that's at least three inches in diameter. And once you start getting up like that, yep. you, you're really starting to pay money for them. It's got to be thick because you're going to have to to thread yeah. to go on your spindle. Yeah. That's why I just thought it'd be good to do it in a metal lathe because then you could just put the thread in it and everything while it's there. I mean, I've looked I looked on um, Carbotec and it's it's over a hundred dollars for a, 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 an aluminium ring. It's like, mate, I'll go and melt down some cans and make my own. <laughs> Tough crab today, I tell you. What you're better off doing is, is if you're making a face plate, as distinct from a face plate ring, you're better off buying a nut that fits a spindle and welding that onto a bit of steel plate and then machining it down. All right. Yeah, I've, seen, uh, I've, I've got one like that that's a hangover from when I was a kid. All right, I've got to go and have some lunch. I shall catch you all later. All right, I'm just divvying through my wood to try and find a decent blank that I don't have to attack with the chainsaw. See you later, uh, Robbo. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Yep. No worries. Catch you, everybody. Have the rest of the day be a good one. Ah, I've got you. <laughs> I wonder see who's going to win the battle. Yeah. Hang on, Joy. I'll let you in in a sec. Hi, Dom. Hi there. 
going on, Windy jo Windy Joy? Yeah, this works. <laughs> yes. Yep, it does yeah, work. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Just went to the store and just enjoying this really, really nice, cool breeze. You you went to the store without us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think you wanted me to, to, to. You wanted to see me buy lotion and undergarments. Oh, you don't know about Jay. He <laughs> might be into that. Shush, Bob. Don't say that. What is private What are you for? I just got to mute myself. I've got to use my phone. So. Uh, wait, my thumb's in the way. I also bought a bottle of the hard stuff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the doctor is medicine. I usually drink tea, but I felt like a soda. Well, some of the most collectible soda pop cans and bottles are the original Dr. Pepper tonic and it was tonic water I believe it uh, a lot of people don't realize that soda used to be a medicine oh yeah 7-Up was originally intended for um, upset stomachs Coke was uh, supposed to energize you uh, Dr. Well, Pepper yes. was supposed to relieve, <laughs> relieve bowel issues. Of course, you know, it's made with plums, so that would explain that one. Yeah, and that was, we have a, in the Detroit Historical Museum, we got a lot of museums around here, but they have the history of beverages because Werner's ginger ale started here and that was started out as being a medicine also but it it's our big thing that claimed to fame for beverages is Werner's I did not know this until recently but Mountain Dew was actually intended for mixed drinks Yeah, that my parents and it's, used to use it for that. Yeah, they, they consider it a grapefruit flavored drink. Yeah. I remember as a kid being able to get some of it occasionally, but that's what it was. It came in a bottle and you'd use it for mixed drinks. I'm trying to hide this from the street light. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not at home. I'm actually. <laughs> That's where I'm at, actually. I stopped for a minute. Uh, walking home? Yeah. The sun was setting. Got this nice, cool breeze because it's been super hot today. Almost triple digits. It was in the 90s today, and it was just. I wanted to chill. That's what it was. I just sat here and decided I wanted to chill. And the sun is pretty much set. Sky's still blue, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Were you There's Pacific not a cloud time ahead. or central? Mountain. Mountain, okay. Yeah, I did a no-no today. I used a hose to clean off my porch. Yeah, water restriction. Around here, that's a big no-no. Oh, yeah. Serious. If they catch you watering your, 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 your driveway or your sidewalk or your porch or whatever, they charge you $500. 
Grow. Did you drive? Did your porch grow? What? Yeah. When, when you ordered the porch, did it grow? I still didn't hear you. When you watered your porch, did it grow? Oh, no. Oh, come on. But so I had the how water long going. Ha how long have you been in water restriction? Oh, my gosh. I was a kid. This is a desert. Water is a precious commodity. Uh -huh. Where are you located? Southern New Mexico. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a half hour drive to what is. Only been there once though in my life. On my 18th birthday, my friends took me down there and got me plastered. And then I came <laughs> home and the next morning I woke up with a really bad headache. I felt like I was, you know, I felt like I was seasick and I, for some reason I had a tattoo on my leg. <laughs> so I must have really enjoyed that birthday. <laughs> yeah. If it's one, did you ever remember. find out yeah. which of your friends instigated it, or was it pre-planned? Oh no, it was it was one friend that instigated it. Her name was April. Well, her name is still April, but you know she's just not around anymore. It was her idea to go to what is and get drunk because. In the United States, the drinking age is 21. In Mexico, the drinking age is 18. So, you know, a half hour drive south and you're legal to drink. You know, Border Patrol kind of frowns at you when you come back drunk, but what can they do? You're 18. <laughs> yep. That's like between yeah. here in De Canada and Detroit. It's just over the bridge and the same age differences. Yeah, well, apparently just, I got the tattoo in El, in El Paso, oh. Texas. And I, I, I don't remember much of, you know, that night. But apparently my friends all pulled their money together to get this tattoo that I thought was so pretty and cool. And they were short, like by, I don't know how much, I can't remember. It was many years ago, many, many moons ago. <laughs> and uh, so the tattoo artist, when he found out that they were all pulling their money together to get me the tattoo because it was my birthday, he said, you know what? Don't worry about the rest of it. He goes, I got that covered. So... <laughs> yeah. I got. I guess you could say I got a discount tattoo. Yeah. So, so what did it? Did, were you drunk? Were you too drunk to remember how he got the rest of the money? <laughs> uh, considering I did not, we 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 did not go loan. We took a a chaperone, so to speak. I I, I know for a fact that's not how he got the rest of the money. We had a friend who was a staff sergeant in the military. He went with us. And he was also he was not only a designated driver, but he made sure we didn't do anything stupid. I've and been that nobody, person a, a few times. I cannot seem to keep that street light from. So, what do you think of my new map? Ah, the Green Hornet. Yeah. Oh, Where okay. Yep. The elk, deer. I like that. I like it too. And since we all know what my favorite color is, <laughs> the color of money. Well, it depends on where you're from, but yeah. I so want a farm. I hate the city. A true farm or a ranch? Anyways, I'm procrastinating. 
Uh, I'll probably get back on later, but I got to get finished headed home. Not like it's a long walk. I mean, it's just the other, behind the Baskin Robbins right there. <laughs> so it's not a long walk. And no, Baskin Robbins has, in the last three years, Baskin Robbins has only seen me once. So <laughs> that's how I keep my girly speaker. <laughs> Look at those trippy pants. <laughs> oh, oh. Look, I die, eh? I don't know. They were colorful, and they made me smile. So, yep. And my Catch you when you get me. home. All right, y'all take care. Hey, yep. how do I shut this off now? <laughs> there we go. So what you doing now, Jay? Um, I've got no idea at the moment. This is a piece of um, bottle brush and it's um, rather wet. Oh, I don't know. I might, might just do a small container or something like that. Mm -hmm. Better pass one of those through the camera, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
You know, it looks like you've got a little rust on the quill. If uh, you get bored sometime, take some biled emery cloth or sandpaper and get rid of that and put a little oil on it. It'll help the quill tremendously. Are you meant to throw it on the headstock? No, the quill, the part that holds the tailstock. Oh, okay. No, back in one. Yeah, that's the quill. Yeah, it's all pretty rusty, this lathe. Well, take it off with some emery cloth. You'd be surprised. It's easy to do. I just get a long strip and just wrap it around it. And, and by pulling the ends back and forth, I can take it off easy around something round. Yep. Oh, and then a touch of oil will make the quill a lot easier to move in and out. Would um, would packing grease be better than oil? No, no, because packing grease will pick up on shavings and sawdust and want to pack it together. Okay. Because of the vis viscosity of it. Yeah. Just a little bit of what we would call three in one oil. It's just a brand here. Yep. You know, a trade name on it, but it's basically an all purpose oil. Okay. And you can unscrew the whole thing. It just it cranks yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah, I um I had to pull my tailstock apart on my old lathe because I had to clean it up. So yeah. 
I kind of know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, because the other end of the quill is just a big threaded nut. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It moves but, quite uh, freely for something that's got a little bit of rust on it, that's for sure. Definitely um, better quality metals than what mine was made of. Yeah. Well, yeah, there is. If you're going to clean the bed off, put the sandpaper around a piece of known flat stock yep. and use that. And that'll that'll help the top and the sides you got to remember. But the part that is, if you think of how the tail stock works, the clamp on it, it pulls up the round disc underneath between the bars. And uh, if that gets rusty down there, sometimes it's really hard to clamp and you got to push down on it and that can cause a lot of stress on the bolt. Yep. So uh, it's one thing I try to do yearly, at least just clean any rust off the bottom. Yeah, I'll have a go at that, like, have a go at that later today.
I bet Robo taught you to hollow that way. Yep. And he also gave me this tool to do it. What's a flute like? Shallow? Uh, it's um, it's on a it's on a higher degree than the other stuff. It's mostly about sixty five. These ones. Yeah, but the flute is, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. You need the strength to do that. That's the way that, the only way my grandfather turned with it. Yep. The, the tool he had was one of these secret tools he couldn't talk about. Yep, because <laughs> they had they were just for the Masonic members only. Yep, it's surprising how many wood turning tools were designed by Masons. Yeah, pretty smart fellows then. Well, it was a guild. It was a trade, and they kept their trade and tools secret on how they did stuff, like carvers. I only muted it so you could keep talking and didn't didn't think you were going to oh. stop. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the uh, go be going back through history because I love history. It was interesting to see that the Bodgers were the renegades in the wood turning history. What what I would consider modern, but the Bodgers go back a couple hundred years, but that's still modern when you figure they were, they had wood lays back in the Incas uh, because they have found stuff that was turned. And uh, the big thing, even back in uh, biblical days, they had items that were turned in a lathe totally different than what we see today, but we do see it somewhat practiced in India where the lathe is bow driven and it went back and forth like a bodger would later, you know, making uh, chairs and stuff. In, yep. uh, but they were treadle driven. Oh yeah. For the bodgers, but the bow lays that, and then they also had them where they had a big wheel, and they'd have somebody sit there and spin the wheel and use belts in order to give speed. Is that what their slaves did? Yes, they well, they some of them were considered apprentices, but they had to learn uh, mostly through Europe. They were it was an apprentice program, and the apprentice learned by watching and also did all the dirty work <laughs> yeah the lack you know they they start yeah they start by cleaning up and they were young they like 14 years old 12 14 years old and then they were dedicated to that as a job and they were not necessarily sold off but indentured was more the polite word uh, yep. Because they had to work for him in order to have room and board and be fed and clothing yep. and stuff like that. Uh, and they had some pence that they could, if they were good at it, went back to the parents that allowed them to become slaves for someone else. Yep. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, almost all the crafts. Not necessarily, well, pottery, that, that has some interesting histories the same way, but the potter's wheel has always been turned by the person yeah. with their foot. 
but how you mix clays and what you use for glazes, those were really big secrets. Yep. All right. I appreciate you coming in, Dr. Bob. I've just had my, my knock on the window. My lunch is ready, so. <laughs> okay. Well, it's 1040 here or 1050, so. All right. Get Thank cleaned you up much. and lay down and read a bit. I'll see yep. you tomorrow. Okay. Have a Thank good you. day. Yep. Bye. You too. See you later, Mark. Uh, Joy, any tree people in the background? Don't get too ugly. Whoops, too late. <laughs> uh, uh.